So at the beginning of the year, 2013, Derek Halpern of Social Triggers was on the program and basically reprimanded me for not being more strategic with our email marketing. That was like in January or February. Then came in MailChimp. So I opened up MailChimp and it was bright and shiny and super easy to use and I was thrilled. And I've jumped from email marketing client to email marketing client and this was just easy to use and easy to send which was awesome for me. So MailChimp's team member Julie Gora is going to be on with us tonight for the entire 30 minutes tweet on YFE chat. She's going to teach us how to optimize her email marketing. So it's going to be really cool, awesome, fun chat at the Stacey Harris is tweeting for YFE. And uh, yeah, stick around. Tweet at YFE chat. So this is Jennifer Dono, the host of Young Female Entrepreneurs, the weekly live show that happens every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern here at yfe.me slash join live. And like I was saying before we got started, MailChimp's team member Julie Gore is on. She travels all over the U.S. And I don't know, we'll have to get more details on the traveling, but she's constantly out and about talking about MailChimp, helping bloggers and crafters better promote their businesses and stay in, in touch with their community. So she's gonna be on with us, answering your questions about email marketing, answering your questions about MailChimp, etc. cetera. It, how cool is it to have an actual member of MailChimp on with us and answering your questions direct live? Hello, that's so cool. So I'm very excited. I see a lot of you on the chat, so thank you so much for showing up live. Um, shout out to Stacy at this Stacy Harris. Uh, she is on Wife Entrepreneur's Twitter handle. She's going to be tweeting out tweetables, but if at any time you have a quote from Julie that you think is super tweet worthy, then um, use the hashtag YFE chat. We're also on Instagram, the same uh, hashtag tonight. So Instagram what you're drinking, what you're doing, um, if maybe you're working on the side while you're watching this that's all great so I've got a lot of things to go over so I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into them the first thing of course is this that tonight's show is sponsored by a couple sponsors the first one is Oval Eye TV Oval Eye TV hosts and produces live video events built to meet your objective visit Oval TV to request a free 30-minute consultation today to find out more about going live with your brand and by MailChimp MailChimp supports more than 2.5 million email subscribers worldwide, sending 4 billion messages per month. MailChimp is designed for the do-it-yourself power user, someone looking for all the power of an enterprise application, but built for anyone to use. So full disclosure, this is not part of the sponsorship agreement or anything like that. I just really love using MailChimp, and I personally want to find out more about what it is that I'm missing, and I think a lot of you guys will want to find out the same things too. So new stuff at Young Female Entrepreneurs Headquarters. We've got a lot of stuff going on right now. So YFECon um, happened back in November of 2012. It was our first conference that we did via live stream and it was a paywall so you had to pay to get in and you were able to network and meet people from around the world and listen to awesome speakers. So we're going to do that again in 2013. It's set for September 12th um, and that is going to be really cool but in, in preparation what we did is we went ahead and made everything open to everyone. So if you go to youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com, there on the home page is our MailChimp uh, big form that if you sign up for our email list, select what cities you want to be part of too. If you want to be part of Seattle, Phoenix, New York City, Los Angeles, all of those have upcoming uh, in-person meetups coming up. Select those and you'll get instant access to over six hours of streaming video. Talking about partner partnerships, uh, new media marketing, crispy bikinis and Zweet sports for example talk about how when crispy bikinis instagrams out a picture of their bikinis is at crispybikinis.com uh they have tons like 30 bikinis fly out their their door just from an instagram of what a, a previous client bought so those are the kind of things that uh, were talked about at YFE Con 2012 so i'm super excited about that and then um along with that on youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com, if you go there right here under the videos tab up at the top, we now have 
all of our past YFE chat live videos there. So if you scroll down, really easy. You can pin them, you can like them, all sorts of fun stuff in a very simple location. And at the top too, you can see that you can subscribe on iTunes and YouTube, etc. So finally, if you go to Trello.com, and I have a, a screenshot of that. <laughs> You guys, there's a lot of stuff going on. Trello.com forward slash YF Entrepreneur. This is a place I get tons of emails from all of you, and I want to feature as many young female entrepreneurs as possible, but it's just we have a very small team of people that organize YFE. And so if you go to Trello.com slash YF Entrepreneur, this is now our most transparent, easy communication type of um, uh, hub where you can find out what it is that we're working on, where you can contribute, and where you can be featured. I get a lot of requests to be featured on this show or to be part of the blog or whatever and I don't think they've ever appeared or seen a show before so this is an easy way to figure out what it is that we actually do <laughs> so going past trello.com slash YF entrepreneur really cool by the way um we've got a few events phoenix is coming up on may 11th in-person meetup so if you're anywhere in phoenix shout out to stacy harris she's organizing an in-person meetup there in los angeles may 7th in pasadena her career advice which is a we're a huge fan of hers julie kelly she's going to be hosting along with itty bitty party committee which itty bitty party committee is on yfe con so if you go to youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com you can see their video they are the funnest oh my goodness so they you just show up just to meet them and Julie um and then finally New York City May 14th is at Wix with um Nakate and I can't I'm probably pronouncing the name wrong but they just came out with a new line n-a-k-a-t-e project.com gorgeous pieces she's involved Wix Lounge is involved and then Learn Vest and so Marissa of moiOnline.com is organizing that so if you're anywhere in the new york city area make sure that you check it out go to youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com to follow us on facebook twitter sign up for our mailed in email list courtesy of mailchimp well actually um just awesome email list so uh so anyway the last piece i promise this is the last piece before we bring julie on and this is actually i'm speaking to you Corey freeman at Corey freeman on twitter this is something you need to sign up for we're talking about stepping it up in april that's been a common theme that we haven't necessarily necessarily planned for with yfe but it seems to come up every week step up and enter in this 17 magazine contest if you're 15 to 22 find out more about it right now or right now. <laughs> if you're passionate, creative, or really talented, you should enter 17's Pretty Amazing Contest. You could be on the cover of 17 magazine. I just think it's awesome that there's a contest that's about what you've done and what you want to do and like what's on the inside. I'm really excited. It's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, along with every other girl in America and anywhere else. I'm, I'm so excited to be on the cover of Seventeen Magazine because I think it represents every young girl. It's probably one of the biggest things I've ever done. I never thought I'd be on the cover. We, we had a good time. Anyone that's not afraid to go out there and, and express their personal style. I think what makes you pretty amazing is being good on the inside. Advice I would give someone proposing on the cover of Seventeen would be just to have fun. Be a, as natural as you can. I find if you act like a statue, you kind of look like a statue. It's, as long as you're having fun, I think that really, that'll really show through. Yeah, just totally be yourself and, and feel comfortable and just let loose. You're pretty amazing. And you can be on the cover of Seventeen magazine too. Go to seventeen.com slash pretty amazing to enter. Okay, so there's a couple people that I want to call out. At Corey Freeman is one of them. At Utoria, uh, Tori of At Utoria. And then Stacy Ferreira of uh, My Social Cloud. So tweet them, tell them to enter that contest. It's time to step up. And no matter who you are, what it is that you do, enter to win. You win money, you get to meet all those people, and you get to be on the cover of Seventeen Magazine. As a business owner who's trying to change the world, that is your platform to be on. So... Anyway, I just want to say thank you, um, Tessa Rowe of Tessa Lee Events. She is a Seattle City Coordinator. She's on chat tonight. Um, Corey, of course, is on chat and at the Stacey Harris. So stay tuned for the after party directly after this where at the Stacey Harris and at Corey Freeman are going to be taking over and talking about what you guys are talking about on Twitter. So without further ado, I'm very excited about this, talking email marketing because as Derek Halpern of Social Triggers, like I said before, he pointed out, I have not a clue about email marketing. I've 
bounced from email marketing client to email marketing client, and I finally found MailChimp to be an amazing platform. Julie, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Hi. <laughs> so Julie, for everyone that's watching, um, Julie, I asked her for a headshot. She was so cute. She sent me, um, uh, I think I have the picture on there. It's the MailChimp guy going like, hi. <laughs> and he's and it's saying like see you soon or see you later or up at the top. I think it says see you soon. Yeah, see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't have a headshot. So um but anyway, Julie, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do, how you got to MailChimp and and how you are how can you how can you help young female entrepreneurs? Um, I'm a brand manager at MailChimp. I work mostly with bloggers and crafters. I go to conferences, meeting people, um, also online publishers. Um, we sponsor a lot of conferences, so I go and talk to people about how they can use newsletters for their blogs or their small businesses. And I've been at MailChimp uh, about a year and a half now. Came from an advertising background, and I don't know what else I, uh, I can tell you all about MailChimp. <laughs> So you've been a fantastic resource for me because I, I'm. She's not support or anything. People. She talks to bloggers. She goes to these events, and I email her questions about like, oh, what happens if a city coordinator wants to log in or whatever. And she's always super responsive and emails back from asking other departments. So, uh, out of what you do, a travel is a big part of it. Showing up at conferences and representing the brand. What are the, a, a couple past conferences that you've shown your face at? Um. I do mostly blogger conferences. Um, I was at Snap Conference last weekend, which was a DIY Huge conference. blogger conference. I've gone to Alt, and we're, we've been doing Alt for the past couple of years. I'm going to the mini Alts this summer. So if you're going to be at the one in New York or San Francisco, I will be there. Um, fashion bloggers, food bloggers. Uh, I went to Craftcation in, in March, which was for uh, – crafters not necessarily bloggers but um I don't know all sorts of things it's I can't keep it straight <laughs> no I think that's awesome so as far as um MailChimp goes let's get into the real hardcore tips because you speak to bloggers all the time you go to these conferences and you actually get to speak with them face to face even in person so as far as MailChimp goes a number of us are using MailChimp what are the three top underutilized features within MailChimp do you think that we could be better utilizing? Um, well, I have more than three on my list. Actually, I think I have four or five, but... Which I'm probably, like, doing all <laughs> of them. <laughs> well, there's a couple that if you are a young female entrepreneur, I'm assuming some of you, well, a lot of you have e-commerce or shops or something like that, and we have an integration called e-commerce 360 that can integrate. It's free. You integrate it with your CRMs. We're trying really hard to get it to integrate with as many as we can, and you, it makes you possible to track the individual visitors to your website that come from your MailChimp campaigns. It can capture order information and then pass it back to MailChimp and then you can review those details in your reports and you can use it to set up segments, which I know is another question coming up. Um, and you can figure out what the ROI is on your newsletters. So is it worth it for you to do newsletters? If you use e-commerce 360, that can show you exactly in dollars. Like, yeah, it's worth it. Um, and another one I like to tell people about, especially if you're selling something, if you're a crafter or you have a store, is Chimpity Do, which is what? an app. It's called Chimpity Do. We, we have some fun names around MailChimp, but it's an app that you can install on your iPad, and we actually just released it for Android tablets too. And it sets, you can set up a nicely designed list um, capture, you know, to collect a list. So if you are going to craft fairs or you have a store and you want to have an iPad at your front desk, you can collect people for your newsletter list there and it goes directly into your MailChimp account and you don't have to type, smart. type it up in Excel and then, you know, import it. And um, I'm trying to think what else. What, one person suggested A-B a, B testing as one of our underutilized features um, where you can test subject lines and other things and whichever one's the winner, it'll send that out to the rest of your list. And I also love People don't do this a lot, but we have these welcome emails that once you have people sign up for your newsletter, it sends them a welcome to my list email. And people don't realize that you can customize that to say, you know, 
go back to my website, here's a great article, or while you're waiting for the great deals from my site, why don't you check out the latest in my shop, things like that. Um, and a lot of people aren't doing anything with that, and it's a really great way to get the word out right first thing when people sign up. Okay, but in all fairness, I actually updated our welcome email uh, recently to match our branding and everything, and I didn't, I was one of those people, I didn't realize that you could actually update the welcome email, and also you could um, actually update where people were sent, so it, once they confirm their email address, it gets sent back to your website versus being sent to like the MailChimp static page, which I thought was really cool, and hadn't been utilizing that <laughs> so very excited about that so since we're talking about fun names like chim chimpity do chimpity do <laughs> okay so um design though as far as like really strong branding design it seems like a, a a real foundation of mailchimp and so a lot of us subscribe to um email lists like marie forleo's for example she sends out these like uh weekly emails that are very simple it looks like she's just emailing you personally there's no real flash there's maybe one image and one call to action a very simple link whereas mailchimp has a lot of options for templates and all sorts of fun stuff do you feel like the the way that email marketing marketing is moving is going to be more more like simple like uh, design down type emails or do you think that there's still a place for the gorgeous templates the the you know perfect graphics etc I think it depends on what your thing is if you've got a shop you're going to want to show people what's in your shop so you want to have pictures um, but if you're let's say, I don't know, with bloggers, I tell them, you know, you want to be visual. You want people to click through your emails. It's all about, you know, getting people to go back to your site. So link back to everything and include images. And you don't have to tell them everything in your newsletter because you want them to go back to your site. So um, I guess it just depends on what your like I said, what your thing is. I don't think that's the right word. But. No, I think that's good. Well, another thing that kind of goes along the lines of you want to, you don't have to tell everyone everything within the email. You don't have to include a million different blog post links. Um, your blog, uh, MailChimp's blog, actually, I was reading through some of the posts and they were insanely enlightening. So this is serious data analysis, all sorts of really interesting things coming directly from the person that has control over, what, 2 million plus accounts that can see what is working and what's not working. And so I highly recommend if anything that you do after watching this, um, the, the show is that uh, you go to the blog.mailchimp.com site and just take a look at what it is that actually works. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting is that I have a need, like because it is, <laughs> because it is so easy to send out with MailChimp, I feel like every day I just want everyone to know what I'm doing or like, oh, don't forget about this event. And I'm like, okay, it's so easy to send out, but do people actually open it? Is it worth it? Is it worth the 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 annoyance of someone getting it in your inbox? And so that was, it's not a question. I'm just saying everyone should go check it out because I think it's really good. So let's talk about segmentation. So what is it? You mentioned it briefly at the beginning. What is segmentation? Why should we use it? And actually, how should we use it within our businesses? Um, well, segmentation lets you send targeted emails to certain segments of your list. So you can segment different ways in MailChimp. You can collect certain information from people. So for instance, you on YFE are collecting, you're asking people what city they're in. So in the future, if you wanted to have a meetup in Seattle, you could segment your newsletter to send only to the people that are in Seattle. Um, and you can do you can segment by so many different things if you want to segment by birthdays all the january birthdays and send them a special happy birthday email in january or based on their sign up date based on their location based on those e-commerce stats you were getting um like how much you know anyone who spent over a hundred dollars gets a special you know email from me saying here's a 20 percent off coupon or something um and you do that in MailChimp, you do that just when you're setting up, it's the first step. You can pick what segment you want to send to and you can pick up to five different criteria if you want. And we have a thing called Hairball. There's another uh, fun name <laughs> that can, if you're e-commerce and you want to segment down much smaller, you can use Hairball. It's a little bit more uh, time consuming, but I know a lot of maybe bigger e-commerce sites are 
are um, using Hairball to get really down to the nitty gritty of who they want to send their newsletters to. I have not heard of Hairball yet, <laughs> but so another reason why Anne Marie Gill, uh, shout out to her of CascadeValleyDesigns.com. She Facebook posted she couldn't be here tonight live, but she's really excited to watch live. She's been um, a manager of different accounts with 65,000 plus subscribers, and she's just a huge fan of MailChimp. And she like posted with a picture of her daughter with the MailChimp knit hat. So cute. But um, so she's a big fan of all of this. And now Jules Young Tiger is kind of expanding on that question about segmentation. One of the things that I read about on the blog was this idea that if you're segmenting to people, um, the ones that actually hurt you is when you segment to people that have not opened your email list or your email that you've sent out so if you send again to people that didn't open it um that they'll actually unsubscribe they'll they'll um they'll spam you they'll do all sorts of interesting things or not even open it whereas you should it it recommends that you should actually open the emails that people or resend segment to people that are opening your emails on a regular basis kind of what you said uh, rewarding loyal clients, people that are spending a lot of money on that side. So as far as um, that goes, Jules is asking, what kind of campaigns work best to, slap, to establish trust and keep people opening and clicking through? That's a tough question. <laughs> um, so, um, one thing we have at MailChimp is like a star rating. So you can, as you start sending newsletters out, you can go in there and see it's up to five stars. I think it's four or five stars. And um, the you can see like three or more stars as the people who are really engaging in your newsletters. So that's you know those are the people who are opening them, clicking them all the time. Um, we actually just wrote a blog post about someone who's using star rating their uh, their commerce. They're using star rating to um, segment their newsletters and do the same thing, like giving them first dibs on sales and things like that because they're doing most of their their business was the people who are three or more stars. Um, as far as how do you get people to continue reading, it's, I don't know, with the bloggers, a lot of them want to send out a newsletter every day based on when their RSS feed updates. And I don't know if that's really necessary because people are going to start dropping off. They're going to start unsubscribing. Um, you would rather people unsubscribe than mark you as spam. It's better for you. Um, Okay, well, so, since you're talking about that, kickstartkitchen.com, they have a really, that's Jules, she's, uh, she has a really robust blog that has a lot of guest bloggers, and she'll send out email market. I'm part of their list, and so every week or so, she'll send out an email with a list of past blog posts, so kind of a resource for people. Is that effective? Should we take that type of approach, or should we focus on maybe one most popular blog post? Um, well, we have RSS to email, and that's something that you can automate and you can decide if you if you're posting blog posts all the time um, you might want to set it up a couple times a week you can set it up to go out every day once a week Tuesdays and Fridays twice a month it's up to you and that's automated and you can set up what you want to include in it um, but I like to tell bloggers like make sure you link back to your blog and um, you know some people prefer to get those posts in their inbox I know there's a few um, blogs I subscribe to, like I open my apartment therapy email every day, and that has the, the just three random blog posts in it. It's not everything they're posting. So I think that that's good. Um, I know like Design Milk uses MailChimp, and she sends out a daily digest, and Design Sponge uses MailChimp, and she sends out a weekly. Oh, I love Design Sponge. Yeah, she just started using MailChimp and um, recently maybe the past couple months, and she sends out a weekly email. And it's kind of a recap of what was in the blog, what we're loving this week, um, you know, something, a little note or a special interview just for the newsletter. So, um, you know, if you don't want to go the automated route, you know, doing it once a week or once a month, depending on what your thing is or every other week and making it special for your subscribers is a way to get people to subscribe to your newsletter and grow your list. All great answers. So another one was from Callie Mina. Callie, um, you'll have to tell us what your business is, but her question is, any tips for successfully emailing pe emailing to generate leads that translate into services face-to-face? -face? So if you're a real estate agent, a mortgage broker, or any service-based business. So sending out something that will translate to a one-on-one -on -one relationship where you meet with someone in person versus selling out to like get people to look at your blog posts. Not exactly your main focus at MailChimp, <laughs> but... Any ideas? Um, 
I think, I mean, I see a lot of like, say, photographers. They're not necessarily selling anything. They're trying to get, you know, people to sign up for their sessions. I think not spamming people, not sending it too much um, is the number one. <laughs> if, you know, um, if you're someone's real estate agent and they used you to buy a house three years ago and you're sending them an email once a week, they're probably going to unsubscribe. Um, so <laughs> I'm trying to think what would be the best answer for that. Just make sure it's relevant and um, you can, like I said with A-B testing, you can test out subject lines to see who's opening what. Um, you know, I love the whole, this is what I've been up to this month, check it out. Or if you're a real estate agent, showing a couple of your top listings in an, in an email. <laughs> no, I think those are all good tips. And I think the moral of all of this, of the, of the two questions, is to start u- using the underutilized tools, like A-B testing, um, editing your welcome email the little things like the details I think matter a lot and as far as like for young female entrepreneurs account I want to talk about a couple of things that I really liked about this and that you guys should if you're not using them now as far as you underutilize is that account piece what did you guys used to call them account keys what are they called now they're like it's roles right you become you like oh yeah you can um we have new like permissions kind of so they're it's for um you know, people with teams that are working on the emails, you can uh, grant certain permission. I, I'm blanking on the what we're well, that's calling okay, it. Because we're because that's what we're doing. And so, like Stacy was saying at the Stacy Harris, she's in Phoenix, and she logs in and she can send to a segment in Phoenix, and she has uh, permission to do that on her own Mailchimp account, which was awesome. And then um, another thing that we started doing was the autoresponders too. So can we talk a little bit about autoresponders? I know we only have a few minutes left, but autoresponders, I feel like is something that, um, again, it doesn't seem like as far as Mailchimp goes and that level of email marketing, that it it seems like it could be utilized better or more effectively Um, for even the people that are doing autoresponders today. Well, um, one thing I'll say is, you know, MailChimp has a free service, but autoresponders is one of the things that you can't get if you aren't paying. So you can get pretty much everything, but autoresponders, you have to be on a paid account. Um, And for everything that I'm telling you here today, um, you can find a lot more information by just going on our blog or searching in our search bar. Because, for instance, there's, I think there were a couple really great blog posts that went out by um, Ben, who founded MailChimp, about autoresponders and using maybe e-commerce data to send out autoresponders, um, which I'm not going to go and find and read because that would just take up all the time. But, um, <laughs> but so you can, autoresponders are just like maybe if you want, some people call them drip campaigns if you want. Um, you can send out an automatic email for someone's birthday or their purchase data um, by their subscribe date, maybe you want to send out a reminder email two weeks after they sign up for your newsletter, like, or based on a campaign event, you want to send, you can send out an autoresponder based on a certain link someone clicked on. So if you had a specific recipe in your newsletter for, I don't know, hamburgers, you could say anyone who clicked on that, I will send this special French fry recipe. I don't know. That's, a really silly um, example, but <laughs> that those are just some examples of how you could use autoresponders, and you can send them to segments too, like we talked about segmentation, um, and you just set them up by clicking on the autoresponders tab in your MailChimp account, and you can get the same reports for them like you would for your normal newsletters. I think that's I think it's well worth. So when Derek Halpern of Social Triggers, who was on with us earlier in the year, when he disciplined me and he said, "You should be doing this. I can't believe you haven't done this yet." I had been building my list with different email marketing clients, and truth be told, in 2008, I opened up a MailChimp account, and I just at the time. I, you guys it must have just gotten started or it was going through a change and I did not like it. <laughs> in, I, in 2011, honesty. we had a redesign and it's a lot cleaner than it's, it was. Well, and I finally got on it after everyone, all of our city coordinators were using it and I was just like, okay, finally, I'll get on it and I dropped the other email client. That was like the fourth one in the line that was frustrating me because it was, it was 
arduous. It was like, it was a lot of work to open up the client and actually use it. And so one of the nice things about MailChimp is that you can just open it up and use it. But at the same time, a couple things, you just have to be more strategic about it. That's what I'm learning, like learning from you and from everyone that I followed looking at the MailChimp blog. You can't just send out an email every week or want to send out one every day. You need to, like the one, I think I have a couple screenshots that have been shown too of it. Your CEO talked about some of the edits he made in the newsletter and how it went through like eight different drafts basically between all of your team members because that's how serious it is. It, you end up in the inbox and it's super easy to delete it. And so, you know, be very strategic, do A-B testing, utilize the autoresponders, utilize everything. And I think that's a real message that I want myself and everyone else to take away from this because that's, that's fantastic reminders for all of us. <laughs> Another thing I do suggest for people is just, you know, start with where you want to start and check out your reports. See, you can get really deep into what people are clicking on and when they're opening it. Maybe you want to change what time of day you're sending it because more people are opening it in the afternoon. Or maybe you want to shorten things because people aren't going on the bottom of your newsletter and clicking on the links at the bottom. You can just learn from what you're doing, but you have to start somewhere. So. That's also a great point. Start from <laughs> somewhere, do what you can, and it's really easy with MailChimp, I found. And so um, moving forward, so let's say that we didn't have a, a question that was answered tonight because we're running, we're out of time now. Where can we find you on Twitter, and where can we find out about MailChimp? Um, there's a few different resources. I am on Twitter, but I'm not very active, um, which is a little Gora with an H. And... Um, but our MailChimp Twitter, if you have any questions, it, we watch it all day. And someone's always answering questions there. Um, check out MailChimp.com. There's a search bar that's kind of like Googling something. And you can any question you have, you'll be able to find the answers there. Um, that's where I get half my answers. Um, I'm trying to think what else we have. If you need inspiration for your newsletters, um, you could check out our Pinterest page or inspiration.mailchimp.com, which is all examples of beautiful newsletters people are building in MailChimp that you might recognize. Um, and we do have a page for bloggers. Um, in case you are a blogger, MailChimp.com slash for dash bloggers, which is features a few of our blogger customers and um, features that bloggers may like. Very cool. Well, Julie, thank you so much for coming on tonight. I know we didn't get to go through all of the questions I had prepared because I prepared a lot more, <laughs> Julie. Um, and it was she was so nice to research all of them. So if you guys have any other questions, make sure that you tweet her at Little Gora or you ch you tweet uh, Mailchimp. And um, but otherwise, Julie, thank you so much for being on tonight. Of course. All right, so you've been watching Julie with MailChimp.com talk about email marketing and how we could better utilize it. Starting in just minutes, we're bringing on at the Stacey Harris and at Corey Freeman for our after party, which lasts 30 minutes, and we really pull in our tweets, so make sure that you're tweeting at YFE chat on the hashtag. I'm going to jump on Twitter and take over that for Stacey so she can be commenting and talking about different fun stuff, so stay tuned for that for 30 minutes. Um, our, the replays will be on YouTube.com slash YF Entrepreneur and on um, iTunes if you do a Google search or an iTunes search for <laughs> young female entrepreneurs you can find our video and mp3 files and then of course at youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com everything is there now so um, again huge thank you to Julie and everyone at MailChimp for making our lives just a little bit easier with email marketing I really appreciate it and hopefully you guys took away something make sure that you tweet it out at hashtag YFE chat otherwise this has been Jennifer Dono oh next week oh my gosh before we go next week is huge we're doing a self care themed week at Young Female Entrepreneurs we're talking about on Tuesday um, how to get in shape for summer and then all week we're doing a fun giveaway uh, so you'll just have to stay tuned and the best way to stay tuned is going to yfb.me slash mailed it that's our email marketing list. <laughs> it's very clever mailed it so um, stay tuned and we will see you we will see you <laughs> next Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific 9 Eastern if we don't see you for the after party in just minutes Thank you.